What's up guys? Four wheeler doctor back again. Got another one we can work on here in the shop. Little 500 foreman, four wheel drive. Uh, got some rear end problems. The It doesn't make any noise or anything, but uh, when you put it in gear, it just won't pull with the rear tires. It does fine in, uh, in four wheel drive. I slid the boot back here just to check to see if the joint may be busted, and it may be, but the shaft at least coming out of the rear end isn't broke. It's still uh, still spinning, but I'm going to pull this rear end off here and we can see, see what we got to do. I'm thinking it might be a pinion gear or ring gear or something that's, uh, that's messed up on it. I know I did one kind of like this, a uh, 350 Rancher, but this 500 is a little bit different. So, uh, and this 500 here, I'm the 350. I just did uh, pull the whole swing arm off. This one here, I'm just going to unbolt the, the diff and pull the tube and axle out. So, I'll go ahead and get that tore down, and I'll cut the camera back on when I get to the next step. All right, guys, I got the tires off the things so you can see. Uh, this one here is a lot like that uh, 350 Rancher I did on another video. It's got a bad bearing and seal out here on the end of this tube, which is a very common problem. So I'll probably have to probably show you how to get that apart. Uh, there's cotter pins on each end. Pop those out. This is a 30 millimeter socket nut to get off here. Let's pull both of those, this hub on that side and the hub on this side. And you have to take the brake cables loose as well as the shock bolts. These four bolts at the very front of the differential will have to come off. And these four bolts that hold this flange to the swing arm. And once you get those loose, the whole rear end will come out. I'm probably going to go ahead and just pull all that down and then we'll worry about taking the brake apart and all that stuff later to get the axle out. So let me uh, get these hubs off and get these shocks loose as well as these four bolts. And I'll just turn the camera back on and I'll get ready to pull it off. Also something I did, didn't mention earlier is you do want to stick a jack under here because once you take these shocks off, um, actually I'm saying, sorry, you do need to put a jack under here and jack stands under the frame because once you take these shocks loose, the swing arm will fall down and if you're trying to support it with this, naturally the swing arm will fly up and um, you don't want that to happen. So let those jack stands hold the frame up and... Um, I went ahead and loosened up these bolts here. You don't really have to. The other thing we have to do is take this skid plate off because it's actually attached to the swing arm up here and you can't get to these bolts and the, the four bolts on the bottom of the uh, end of the differential there. And now I'm going to take the um, um, brake wing nuts off. There again, this is my handy dandy tool. I uh, showed this in another video. Socket with a hole cut in it and a couple washers welded on the end. And it takes these things off like a champ. Let me show you this thing in action. If I can get this camera to sit right here. Yep, you saw some of that. The camera about fell off my lap. But let me see if I can do it with this second one too. So there you go, comes right off, a whole lot easier than twisting it. Alright guys, back again, we've got all these bolts off, the four bolts at the front of the diff, took the skid plate off the bottom here with the 12 millimeters. all four of these bolts are out of the flange here, uh, pulled the vent lines loose and unhooked the brake cables, so now all there is to it is to let this jack down a little bit and slip it off there. I'll see if I can catch it on video. drive shaft up in here there's a lot of mud in that as well as in the end here so I can only imagine what the inside of the differential is going to look like so now what we need to do I've already got these loose pull these nuts off slide that shaft off and we have to take the brake side apart I'm sorry sorry the camera work there have to take the brake side apart um, unbolt these flanges then you can slide the whole axle out take this tube off 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tube off this side and take the brake brake panel off this side. All right, guys, I got everything loose. These are all 14 millimeter nuts here, 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 and here. Um, I just throw them in a bag. They're all the same, uh, same out here and all that. So they're all 14. So they're pretty easy. These these tubes will just slide off. Um, that one's pretty full of mud, pretty nasty. Uh, it's also got this little collar out here on the end. You may want to make sure you hang on to that. You don't want to lose it. It actually helps center up the bearing on the end of here or, or press it out to the right location. Uh, then you got the brake panel here. Sometimes you have to tap that off with a hammer, but in this case it come right off. Uh, so that's the brake panel. And this next tube, same thing, slips right off. It's full of water and mud. And then this axle slides right out. Lock the sleeve off there. Put it back on, make sure you don't lose it. And so then we have the differential here. Ready to tear down and see what's wrong with it. I'm gonna I got a little ahead of myself on this one and didn't drain the oil out, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil out now to make sure I don't make too big of a mess when I pull this thing apart. So I'll drain it out for a second and then uh, cut the camera back on when I start to take these bolts out. Alright guys, got all the bolts out of here. There's uh, two 14 millimeter headed bolts here and the rest are 12s. Uh, so now you just have to pry the thing apart. The about the easiest thing to do is try to get a screwdriver in here to catch this little edge. And you can see it actually separated a little bit. Got my hammer, see if I can tap it in there. Don't want to pry on this thing too bad, or it could split the case. But in this case, it come open pretty easy. And then you can take a crowbar and stick under each side and pull up on it. This is very loose. And just wiggle it around and it'll come off of there eventually. see the mud in there that's pretty nasty this thing also has a spacer on each side of this ring gear you want to make sure you hang on to those um, this ring gear here grab a little smaller screwdriver see if I can get up under it and pry it up come out. That's what I'm going to end up having to do. Let's flip this thing over. Take a socket and stick in the end of that shaft where the axle goes. One about the same size. Hoping you can see this. Try to tap it out just like that. Okay, so there's our one, one shim for the outside, one shim for the inside, still there. This thing is nasty, just looks like mud in here. To be honest with you, they really don't look like nothing wrong with the teeth on this thing. I'm thinking we make, we could have it. This is a whole issue here in itself because it's full of mud. We'll have to do a rebuild on it, bearings and seals just to clean that up. But I'm not thinking 
that that's our problem as to why this thing wasn't pulling. I'm thinking there's a chance it may be on this output shaft and I'm gonna have to do a little more work to get to that but um, I'll keep you posted on that I'll clean all this stuff up like I said we're definitely gonna have to do a rebuild on this because it's it's in bad shape this is this has got play in the pinion but the teeth all look like they're on the pinion the ring gear has all its teeth so there's no reason why that shouldn't be spinning but what I'm thinking happened is the universal joint must have broke on this thing up in here in the drive shaft up in there so I'm gonna have to I guess I'm gonna have to pull this swing arm off to get to it there's really no other way to get in there to it and you can't see it good enough looking through the boot here to tell exactly what's going on I don't think you can thing won't slide all the way out yeah I'm gonna have to take that off and see what's going on there all right I'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right guys after further investigation I believe what the problem is here is that can, you can actually look on this axle shaft that there's a step here you can feel it pretty good on those splines they still look good but they have a substantial amount of wear on them and if you put this thing back in here and get it right to the right spot the ring gear will slip on that axle shaft right there see there and what you there it is see it'll spin without the ring gear will spin without spinning the without spinning the axle okay and what causes that is for one thing all of this grit and grime in here these seals on the outside of this axle getting dirt in here and then these this ring gear running in that same location all that time with dirt in it just wears these splines out so this thing looks like it's going to need an axle shaft usually the splines on the ring gear are still good they um they've got some wear on them but may end up just trying to replace that axle shaft and just go with that ring gear but we are going to have to rebuild that thing with all the mud and stuff in the bearings but that's what the problem is that the universal joint's still good up in there so that axle was just slipping on that shaft the whole time all right, well, I might start another video up when I get ready to put all this stuff back together, but I got to order some parts for right now. All right, guys, this is a few days later. Finally got some parts in for this 500 Foreman uh, rear end we're working on. And uh, I'm gonna start taking this thing apart a little bit more. I got it pretty well cleaned out. If you, if you see it earlier in the video, it was nasty. We'll sit the camera over here and see if I can show how to get this thing out of here and maybe not tear anything up. Alright, how's that look? Perfect. Alright, what you got to do first, uh, we got the front cover off, got the um, ring gear out. Now we're working on getting the pinion gear out. These uh, diffs here, this sleeve that the uh, shaft goes into it's just slipped over here it has an o-ring on it you just have to catch it with something a little bit of a lip there and pop it up like that it comes right off and uh, see the pinion's got a lot of play in it there uh, next order of business is getting that bearing I mean that seal out of the inside there you use my old trusty seal puller Mm, Y'all see that? I'm gonna, I need me a shockproof 
holder for this camera because it sure doesn't want to work like this. How about that? Can you see me now? Alright, so let's try to get this seal out of here. Maybe I won't tear anything up, including the camera. They're in there pretty tight. So you just have to bear down on it. I found once it ever starts moving, it'll come on out. But you gotta get it to move first. caked all in there as you can imagine it's caked in there pretty good too so all right i'm gonna uh, cut the camera off clean this out over the parts washer then we'll come back and take this nut out of the top here and the bearing all right guys got it cleaned out pretty good i'm gonna um now we got to get that nut in there it actually looks like kind of like you're looking in the bottom end of the socket uh got to get that out they make a tool to get it out with and i have those tools for some of these discs but I don't for others um, and I'm bad about building more than I buy because they can get expensive so I built one I know this don't look good but it works uh, ended up that's like the inside of a bearing or something there and I ended up uh, welding little globs of weld on it to make it match up and then put it on a half inch drive and it fits in there pretty dang good and hit it with an impact and it'll come right out Also guys, I didn't add when I was uh, over there washing this thing a little bit ago, I did go ahead and um, stick a punch in the staked spot. It has a stake in it right down here on the bottom. Um, stuck a punch in there and bent it back the best I could. It's still got a little bit of a knot there. I usually take the grinder and grind that down so I don't mess the threads up when I put it back in. But you need to unstake that or it's tough to get out. All right, now the next thing to do is take this uh, stick a screwdriver in here and pry up on that on the actual pinion gear and sometimes that'll let it pop out what you're dealing with here is the uh the bearings kind of stuck in it a little bit so it might take a little bit of prying to get it out uh let me swap batteries out on the camera and i'm gonna see if i can get this thing out real quick all right guys i got it out uh, had to just pry on it a little bit it comes right out of there the um, needle bearing down there at the bottom, that thing has got, it's missing all sorts of pieces and it's pretty rough. So now we gotta get it out. Uh, and how you do this, there's actually a snap ring inside this hole. You can see it in the very center of the hole. The one I do, and this is the by far the hardest, process, hardest part of this whole process, is take like a, um, pick and try to catch the edge of that thing and slide it around and what you're trying to do is get that snap ring till you can see the end of it it takes a little bit of time I'm not gonna video all of it because it uh, it takes a while but what I like to do is start here I usually get the pick in there centered up on the ring and then tap it with a hammer till it slides over in that direction and um, I keep doing that until you see the end of the ring and then we'll I may cut the camera back on there and bend the end of the ring out, pull it out with a pair of pliers is what I usually do. So let me get that thing knocked around and see if I can get to the end of it. Alright guys, I'm back again. Still working on this pinion bearing. I'll tell you, this is the toughest one I've had in a while. <clears throat> I tried my blind bearing puller there and it, it didn't work. It broke the top of the, um, of the outer race off. 
So I ended up welding a bolt down into the race. I guess you can tell what that is. And with the slide hammer, ended up pulling the race in part, apart. That normally happens a lot of times. Um, let's see if you can see down in there. That happens a lot of times and uh, um, exposes the snap ring. It usually breaks where that ring's cut in it, so at least I can get the snap ring out. And I'm going to probably have to re weld that nut back down in there and pull, pull the rest of the race out. But this one's being a, a tough one. Um, so this is by far the hardest part of this whole job. Normally, if you can get that ring to fish around and get it out, that's a lot easier to get out. But uh, sometimes you have to resort to welding a nut or a piece of all thread or something in there to get it to pull out. But all right, I'm going to get that uh, ring out of there now and uh, should be able to pull the bottom half out pretty easily. Because I finally got this thing out. This is by far the hardest one I've had in a while. Like I said, it broke that uh, race off. I got the snap ring out. Ended up taking the welder and welding some gobs of weld around this so my blind bearing puller will pull it. And um, I got it out of there. But God, it was tough. I've probably been working on it for, I don't know, an hour or so. But got that out of there. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Um, get the rest of the mud and stuff out of here. And uh, go over, probably take the press and knock a few of these bearings out. All right, guys, we've got the case set up in here. Uh, pressed this bearing out. Did pop the seal out with the steel puller. And these bearings are not in here real real tight. Uh, this is the preferred method to use, pressing, pressing them out with a press. There's some people just beat these things out. That's an inch and 3 16 socket just to push that bearing out. None of these bearings here, as far as the case bearings, have uh, any kind of snap rings or anything like that on them. So they should press right out. Uh, pretty much the same thing with this one. I got a pretty good little kit on eBay for off of um, for this this bike from uh, East Lake Axle out of Florida. It actually has got everything. A lot of times they'll sell these kits bearings and seals, and it'll just be for the differential. And in this case, I needed all the bearings and seals because that left uh, axle bearing was bad and the seal looks pretty bad on the brake but it looks like this thing came with everything which is good keeps me having to buy two kits and it was pretty inexpensive so I'm going to um, press this bearing out of this side also press that bearing off of the pinion over there on the uh, on the workbench and then I'll come right back. Might try to go ahead and push these new bearings in. I think that's pretty self-explanatory and clean them up a little bit more. So I'll be back in just a minute. Guys, one other thing I like to do on these bearings is uh, to put a little bit of oil around the outside. And also before I press it in there, I like to kind of tap it in to square it up with a hammer. We've had them before when you press them and they kick off like that. So I like to at least uh, halfway get it started with a hammer before um, I actually get in there pressing it. And so, stick it into the press like this. Get it centered up. Like that. That's it. And these uh, seals on this thing, you can actually about press those in with your hand. They're not they're not real real tight, so you can just take the seal and push down in it, make sure it's square all the way around, and uh, press it in with your hand. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get these in, and then I'll cut the camera back on when I go to knock that pinion bearing in. All right, guys, why I do this pinion bearing? As you can see, that thing was pretty tough to get out of there with that snap ring on it. It's also about as equally as tough to get back in. And the way I see it, if you have this bearing in here and the uh, other bearing and that funny looking nut, this funny looking nut on top of here, there, there's no way this bearing will come out just under normal use because all of this will be pressing down on it 
and even if it did ride up there's really nothing that it would harm so I don't put that ring back in there and I've done a number of them a big number of them and uh, never had an issue with that thing backing out or even any problems with that pinion bearing so that's the way I do it and it's a whole lot easier than trying to heat the case and freeze the bearing and get it to press all in there because it's tough to press in so I'm gonna take knock this in um, since it's not really the no ideal way to press this thing in a press because you're putting pressure on the case if you did put it in there I usually just use a hammer and a socket in this case it's a 18 millimeter long extension 6 inch extension and square that bearing up and then just tap it down till it bottoms out as I got the bearing pressed off of the pinion you want to make sure you hang on to that spacer in there that actually helps maintain your backlash on your on your bear I mean on your ring and pinion so don't let the spacer come off on the bearing there uh, make sure you you hang on to it and so I'm gonna press that other one on just wanted to add that all right guys I tapped the pinion down in there till it almost bottomed out and uh, you see there now I'm gonna put the whatever you call this nut back in there I did take the grinder and ground down that stake spot just so it didn't mess up the threads any so stick it in there and you want to kind of center it up by hand and then hit it with the impact and make sure you stake that thing back because I have seen them back off before all right guys so I got the that funny nut stuck in there and it's staked in also there's an o-ring that goes around this shaft here as it slides all the way down goes all the way against the bearing I'm not real sure what that does but it was on there before so I'm gonna leave it on now I'll just take and tap this seal down till it bottoms out. Alright guys, now it's time to put the ring gear back in. I had this thing zip tied together so I wouldn't lose these, lose these spacers. I like to put a little bit of oil on the lip there to, or on the shaft there to try to help it slide through the um, seal once it gets started in there. Put your spacer back on. I'm losing spacers left and right. The other one fell off the back side as I tipped this up. So, Okay, this is very difficult to do with one hand. Line your spacer up. Put that one back on there so I don't forget it. And you can just take and tap that, tap that down in there. You gotta get it square first. like that. Still needs to go down a little bit farther. There we go. It's all the way down. I did clean these mating surfaces up. That one needs to be wiped off, but uh, I'll clean them up with a scotch Bright wheel and we'll put some um, RTV on it. What you want to look at when you put this thing back together is make sure that lip didn't flip out on that seal because if it does it'll leak leak pretty bad so make sure the lip didn't flip out and putting that oil on there helps that so i'll uh, oil up this side tap this one together and then i'll be putting the bolts in guys i went ahead and put some uh gasket material the rtv around the mating surface there and then i just press this back on with my hand did put my um, oil around here actually the seal kind of popped out on it but i'm gonna uh, back that off just a little bit and see if i can get it to slide down on there then I'll start putting these bolts back in. Okay. All right, guys. Next thing we're gonna do: left axle bearing. You can hold it. And way up. I don't know if this is the best. Oh, I know this is not the best way, but it's just how I do it. An inch and a half socket on two long extensions. Just shove it through there. It doesn't have a snap ring or anything on it, so you can just knock it out with a hammer. like that and the bearing and the seal came out see that bearings in pretty bad shape seals in even worse shape so what I do is clean this up some it's still got some mud in the bottom in it a bottom of it clean that up and uh, tap a new bearing in there and then the seal right after it. all right we'll cut the camera back on in a sec 
All right, we're going to put a little oil on this seal, I mean on this bearing before we stick it back in. I got the tube cleaned out here and we're just going to tap this one in. Tap it in until it gets square. Then you can just tap each side, kind of go around from one side to the next. And also got a socket to knock it in with. This is an inch and five eighths and it fits just perfect over top of that outer race. It actually needs to be knocked in there pretty good till it bottoms out. And then you can put the seal in. Seal goes just like that. Actually, that's not square. So you can just about press it in with your hand. I'm going to get one more bigger socket and tap it in with the hand. Box cutter we can use? No, you're not using a box cutter. Can you can you um can you use it for me? Like you get it? Can I talk? Okay. Alright, so I got a little you bit bigger socket, inch and three quarters. And it actually fits around the outside of that lip that's on that seal. And tap it in there. This seal here will pretty much um, be flush with the axle tube when you get it in there. I got the design thing. Tap this side one more time. Just like that. Pretty much flush. And then uh, that's all we'll do with that. I'll have to get the rest of the tube and stuff together. But uh, we're just about to put this thing back together. One other thing I left off of the other install was this shaft. I'd found it in the box of parts. It just slides over top of that output shaft, and then you can tap it, tap it on to make it seat down. And that's all there is to that. So I'm gonna get all the other pieces for this axle together and. Um, have it all lined up so I can start putting some bolts back in it. We'll cut the camera back on in a sec. Okay. Yeah. Alright guys, got most of the parts here. Aside from these four out brakes, you don't need those. But I got this new axle here. Good splines on it now. And uh, I'm going to slide this through. It's got two different ends on it. See this end smaller than this end. So the small end goes in first. That should be from the right to the left on this differential. And uh, so it just slides in like that. And then you need to get your little collar that I kept mentioning about not losing. And it slides over next. And then this tube will slide over next. And since this is the front and this is where your uh, shop would mount up, uh, it won't, you got to keep those oriented in the same direction. So stick some bolts or some nuts on that. And then the next piece is this center tube with the hitch and all that on it and it actually should slide right on here like this and one other thing I left off which I didn't even put them in there before you slide all this stuff together you need to put the your o-ring in your groove there I like to put a little bit of uh, wheel bearing grease on it when you put it back together just to help it seal off out to the bottom of my grease but I think we'll have enough to do this one so you just paint a little of that on so it seals up good and then stick the tube back on do the same thing on this side um, and then put your brake panel goes on the other on the other end I've got it torn apart right now because uh, we're getting some brake shoes on the way. So it just bolts up on here. Same same way. Grease the O-ring on it. And then it'll be ready to put back on. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up all these bolts. And we'll cut the camera back on right before I bolt it back up. Yeah. Alright. So we got everything bolted back together under here. These uh, four 14 millimeter bolts here. Four here. 
these four bolts with the nuts and these four bolts here put um as well as the brake panel four there it's just a whole bunch of bolts we got a uh, wheel bearing grease on all the uh, o-rings here 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 and here and the next thing we have to do is put this hub on um, it's that one actually slid in there pretty good so uh, put the hub with the nut on there with another cotter pin and then uh, we're gonna have to wait on the other side the hub over there until we can get the uh, brake shoes in um, and then also we're gonna put these uh, uh, shocks back on the collars fell out of both of these so you might make sure you want to put those back in or it'll make a whole bunch of noise so you just stick the uh, stick the jack under there lift it up you get those bolts in and then tighten those up and that'll pretty much do it for this uh, this install like I said, I'm still waiting on some brakes on that side um, didn't really go over the, the whole brake brake thing over there so we're not not even covering that in this video all right y'all subscribe hit the like button appreciate you watching